It's that time, everybody. Last Jedi. We just saw it first showing. So, <laughs> uh, it's it was a little. I'm actually gonna shut this off because I don't want buzzing over my voice. Absolutely not. <laughs> but uh, uh, so, it was a ride. It was an exciting ride, and some people have been comparing it to Empire, but I don't think so. It's very different. It's got, the, the best way I could describe it without giving away anything, because we're, we're going to try to keep this review relatively spoiler free. I'm going to just adjust the uh, tilt a little bit. There we go. Okay. okay. So, uh, that being said, you'll notice that there are a few parallels with Empire, but for the most part, the story is relatively uh, original, and it doesn't have the same kind of dark overtones that Empire did. It kind of had a nice balance of humor and darkness. Yeah, and I, Disney and Marvel have been doing that with all of their movies, and it's kind of seeping into Star Wars. The first one, The Force Awakens, was... As a movie, I believe, like, a bridge between the between Return of the Jedi and this new trilogy. It introduced the new characters and gave us the state of affairs in the galaxy at the time. It was pretty much a way to establish this new trilogy and this new time period, whereas this movie, The Last Jedi, was a passing of the torch. It was the old crew passing along the torch to the new uh, people, to the new uh, resistance, and allowing them to stretch their wings and become their own characters, not tied down to all the baggage of the past, which is a theme the movie does take into account and does uh, touch on at several points. And... I didn't want to talk about this until we had actually had a chance to see if we can get our own our own perspective and our own thoughts and opinions on this film. But uh, for anybody that's been on social media in the last week, there have been numerous people posting spoiler reviews, non-spoiler reviews, and giving their thoughts on the film itself. Uh, not really to ruin it for everybody else, but just to try to give everybody a heads up as to what to expect. It, for the most part, uh, this new guy, Ryan Johnson, uh, uh, he friggin' nailed it. And I had, a, I had a theory that it was going to be that good when the Disney came out and announced that Ryan Johnson is getting his own Star Wars trilogy. This guy is going to get to direct three more Star Wars movies following Episode Nine, which will be helmed by J.J. Abrams. Yeah. So... All I can say is George Lucas has just got to be steaming right now. Oh, yes. And Disney can be very protective of its IPs. Anyone who's followed the uh, Battlefront controversy with EA, they're not too happy. So uh, this new guy had to do something major to impress upon them and get their, get his own trilogy. Yeah, and thus far, there thus far there have been no words as to what this trilogy will be about, except that it will not be about the Skywalker slash Solo family. So, I have also heard that it's not going to be set in the Old Republic. I had hoped that it would be telling those kind of stories because there's so much well, time from there. Well, I mean, but, we ta we've talked about this in previous reviews how uh, Disney has considered the EU. And by that stretch, the old Republic, not not necessarily non-canon, because if you watch The Force Awakens and you know some of the EU, you know that while they consider it non-canon, they are borrowing certain aspects of it and applying it to this new, I guess you could say, this new timeline. Yeah, the planet they find Luke on, and this isn't really a spoiler, it's kind they don't say that it's Typhon, the home of the Jedi, like the first planet that the Jedi, yeah. if the, if the or Jedi Order came from. If you play Night, uh, Star Wars The Old Republic MMO, you know what I'm talking about. Instead, but they instead call it, it, it's Octu, I believe it's called. 
I don't even think they... Did they actually name it? Uh, not officially in the film itself, but uh, different source, le- different leaks and different sources say that that is the name of the planet is Ock 2. But of course, that could just be because Act 2. That could very well be it, but like I said... It's not for me to de- it's not for me to decide uh, what it's called, but uh, we'll wait till the novelization of the movie comes out, and then it will tell us. Yeah, which going back to the film for just a second, <laughs> uh, I will I will say this uh, between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, there was a three year gap in between those so many adventures could could have and did in fact take place between the two of them as well as i think six months to a year between empire and jedi yeah and one of one of the most one of the more liked and famous stories that takes place between the two is shadows of the empire which for anybody that's played that game in the past you know how excellent and frustrating it can be yeah so, but this one, right after, yeah. literally right after, the moment re- the Force Awakens ends, this movie begins. This is like this is not a time skip. There is no time skip. This is right after. Yeah. So there's not any. Oh well, this could have happened. No, this is maybe. I think at worst a week maybe between. I'd say a month at the outside. At yeah. the absolute outside 30 days. I'd but, say closer to a week, maybe two. Yeah, because they, they, uh, they were definitely... Uh, yeah. They were definitely hauling ass in this... Uh, in, in the opening. They were definitely yes. hauling ass, so... It, Kylo it, Ren still, in the beginning, has all his scars from his battle with Rey. He, like, not even... They're not even fully healed. They're just, like, marks with stitches and it's basically uh, like it's basically like his face is covered with uh, sports bandages yeah medical tape and all that whatnot and I'll, I'll be honest uh, just, well just sciencey me, medical tape yeah was it, was it just me or did it, he seem like he was a little strung out <laughs> like, I think yeah, that, he, I think that's it, why he was wearing the helmet he was just so stressed and strung out from his losses he like, was drained uh, that's a little spoilery but you watch that really? It, it, you, you get it within like the first five minutes. Yeah, five I mean, minutes. you watch the Force Awakens. You know he was not exactly oh, in the best shape. Yeah, he was. He was bad. Yeah. And uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about about this movie is the departure of our dear Carrie Fisher. While I thought they would have rewritten it to kill her off in the movie to kill Princess Leia off in the movie, they didn't, and she was there, well, pretty much through the end. Yeah, and. I imagine a few of the reshoots had to happen, but they handled the character very well. And at the last part, uh, one of the last title cards, uh, when the credits rolled, was a tribute to Carrie Fisher. Our princess. Our princess. May the force be with you always. And it was simple, and I think that's what was needed. I think that that was the best way to handle it. Um... Now, like I said, without spoiling anything for all those that are watching, uh, which strongly recommend you see this movie as soon as possible, because if you don't want spoilers, then you better start hiding under a rock for the oh, next uh, yes. six months, because they're going to be out there. People oh, are going to be talking yeah. about it. So People will talk about this. But uh, the one thing that this movie did leave us on was, where do we go from here? What's next? And and I and I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea, and, and that excites me. Yeah, like, because because this is not everything F- is open. Yeah, I mean, people. We 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 spoke about this earlier. How people felt like this was going to be a shot for shot remake of Empire Strikes Back, where you kind of oh okay, they leave you on a major cliffhanger to keep your uh, to keep your mouth watering for the next uh, for the next installment. But in this one, it uh, it definitely took a different turn, and it was still a cliffhanger. But uh, it's it, a what's going to happen next cliffhanger. Not oh my god, what's going to happen next? It's where do we go from here? Yes, and I will go ahead and say that 
this... <sighs> For any of you who thought Empire was like the darkest days of the Rebellion, uh... Think again. Yeah, this one definitely, uh... And they, they really get you hooked into it. It's not like... It's oh, a nail-biter. It is a nail-biter. Yeah. Uh, there are... And getting getting into, again, the non-spoiler uh, aspects of the film, we were introduced to several new characters that I do hope become part of the next installment. Some The new resistance. Yeah. The new resistance. Uh, there were some that... Uh, there, I'll go ahead and say it. For those of you that don't know, Benicio Del Toro is in this movie. And I wasn't sure because Star Wars doesn't seem like the kind of thing he would do. But then again, he did do Sin City, so you know, who am I to you know who am I to judge? But some actors have range. Yeah. So it was very exciting for me because I do love Benicio Del Toro. I think he's an amazing actor, but I've never really seen him do much in the way of science fiction fantasy. So getting to see him in this film, uh, it, it had me curious as to what could he possibly, uh, what could he possibly bring to the table? And I gotta say, I was pleasantly surprised. Well. I think uh, that's pretty much our thoughts on the movie. Go see it. It's very good. Uh, it'll have you on the edge of your seat. Well, maybe not on the edge of your seat, but you will be glued to your seat yeah. throughout the entire movie. It is we constant. It Well, not constant action. It is very... It keeps the pace up enough so that you need to see what happens next. There aren't these deep lulls in the action. And the which... one thing I could definitely recommend for anybody here, if you decide to get refreshments, I would strongly recommend you bring a piss bag with you. Dude. Uh, well, okay, uh, what's the technical term? A uh, catheter and a urine bag? It's called a stadium, buddy, and <laughs> let's not go there. Well, the, my point <laughs> is that this movie is going to have you... Uh, Go so, to the potty before the movie starts. Make sure you are totally empty. Yes, because yeah. you are not going to want to get up from this. No. We like, did we you didn't. will miss. You, there is, it is constantly going. And if you get up to go to the bathroom, even if it's for like two minutes, you will miss something. Yeah, and that that's kind of where these reviews come in. Because you, you when we do these reviews, you're feeling... Teeny feeling for, tiny bladder. I well, usually end up having to get up. I did not this time. Well, I was going to say, uh, you usually provide the fresh perspective, so you don't want to miss any. Yeah. Where I has, where usually I will see the film two, maybe three times, depending how yeah. good it is, just to see if it holds up, worth a second viewing. This is actually the first time that we've done a review where we've seen the movie at the same time. So this is... We did that for, for uh, Rogue One last year. But we didn't do our review. We didn't start oh, that yeah. until Logan. But this is like the first. About that. Yeah. So this is the first parking lot review that we've done, yeah. where we we're both we going don't. in with fresh perspectives on this, and both of us we sat in the theater. We did not want to get up at all, and we, I think we went through this with the Force Awakens. Like you're looking for a spot to use the bathroom. It like, does not happen. Yeah, we're going to find the most boring spot in the film so that we can go. By the end, it's like, there is no boring spot. <laughs> yeah, there, okay. is, there is no spot for you to get up. And this one is, well, this movie is not worse. But when you have to use the bathroom, this one is definitely worse. Because if you, as you said, if you step you away step from You step away either, two minutes, you're, you're missing stuff. Yeah, it's... And it's not even like, oh, dog fights and lightsaber duels. Like, there is so much. There is so much that you, there is very little you're going to not enjoy in this movie. Oh, yeah. It is definitely a movie that pretty much anybody and everybody will enjoy. And now, uh, Adam, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. Friends, subscribers, viewers, people of all ages, this will be my last parking lot review at least for a while i am happy to announce that i have gotten a new job and uh because of that this is my last review for 
probably quite some time. Also, DC Ember is being cut short. Uh, the reason being is I'm having to move to a totally different state. So I'm going to have to pack up everything and I start right after the first of the year. That After that first week, I start at my new job as a TV producer. So, yay for me, but it's going to be taking up a lot of my time and I'm going to need a period to adjust. I thank all of you who have watched, who have helped me, who have commented and reviewed on all my works. Thank you, thank you so much for everything you've done, for all the support over the years. I greatly appreciate it. I'm hoping to have one chapter out for my fanfiction page before New Year's. I'm trying to get it out, but with moving, I'm just, I can't make any real promises. This is an opportunity that fell into my lap and I could not pass it up. But I will try my best to get all of our stuff, to get it all out to you and to do everything I can for you, my loyal followers and viewers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a happy holidays, a brilliant new year, and of course, may the Force be with you. Always.